Well, hello. I think this is stream 11. Making my own keyboard. I'm going to be um, trying to add this symbol and uh, put it on my schematic. And it is the NeoPixel, which is kind of like these ones on the controller boards here. Hey there, Sarian. Um, but they're surface mount reverse. So they're kind of like I have one of these uh, Neo, what is it? Uh, Neo key one by fours. Get it closer to the camera. So how close can I get and get it zoomed? So like right there. Kind of hard to see it zoomed in, but if I turn the board over, the the goal is that the the LED shines through from the back to the front, so that when like you hit a key or something, that LED lights up. So I'm going to do the similar thing, kind of like what's shown here. Um, mount that on the reverse side. It's got two pins on each side. And um, let's see if I have that over here, I do. So it kind of looks like this when looking through the board. And this is what it looks like on the back. And it's got basically three LEDs built into it, red, green, and blue. And here's uh, someone had writ drawn a symbol, and I th this is easy enough for me to draw. Um, I already have the 3D model for it. I found that. So if I click on this, you can see I have the 3D model for it. Um, can't see it through there, but if I do file footprint properties 3D model, and if I flip this around, you can see there's the what's going to shine through the front, and that's what's on the back. And this little notch here is on the ground pin. So that's how we figure out our orientation and all that. I look as hot as you feel? Eh. Just bad lighting. I'm not, not sweating or anything. Okay. I want to draw the... Well, I want to save this first. I want to draw the symbol first. Symbol editor. So I already have my own project specific library here. Create a new symbol. Symbol name. Let's name it after. This SK sixty eight twelve mini E. C12 mini E. And I guess in parentheses you can put NeoPixel. All right. I forget uh, what symbols LEDs usually get. Beep beep. I guess it is a U because it's a package, right? I'll keep it as a U. All right. My LED has visual orientation marks. Yeah, they're really teeny tiny, but there's a notch in them. You can see the notch there, and you can't really see it on this pin. I don't know why it doesn't show there, but according to the data sheet, there's um, a notch on the pin itself. I noticed that there's a bug here. The notch pin is supposed to be ground. When they flipped it over from right to left, from here, they didn't flip over the pin designators. So see the notches for three ground? It should be over here, not D out. So pretty sure that's a bug. Uh, I double checked some of the schematic for this um, Neo key. I'm pretty sure it's correct that this is the correct pin out. Um, it makes sense because they have all the D ins and D outs chained from these corners and these VDDs are all tied together. These grounds are all going directly, they're all um, directly onto the ground copper fill. Hey there, three ohms. You hate data sheet errors? Yeah. We don't find that many. And hey there, Nightshade, dude. It's a late stream. Yes, it is. I started a bit late. Just doing some CAD work today. Not No software today. Technically, I guess I shouldn't be in the software and game development. I should probably be in soft, uh, science and tech, right? 
Let's draw a box for the thing. I don't know how big I need it to be. Okay, and then I guess we'll add the pins. Well, no, let's draw the LEDs. So how do I do that? Do I just add some lines in here? Um, I need the grid to be smaller. Like, let's go to a quarter of that. Uh, need to go to half. There we go. Hey, look at that. Can I draw that filled? This is a problem. I guess I don't... I, I don't know how to draw the, a filled shape. I'm not gonna worry about it. Gonna fix that up. Um, but it's just kind of depicting the internal connections of things, right? So we'll draw over. I'm not sure exactly where. I guess we'll put it here. I don't know. Yeah, can I duplicate this? I can. I shouldn't have drawn <laughs> this stuff first. I'll just cut them. No one will notice. Okay, now I'll draw it. Um, actually, that's not, it's not centered right, is it? Doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough, right? I'm c kind of just trying to draw my own version of this one that I found here. So the idea is that VDD is common on all of those, and the um, the other end goes into sort of a, a integrated circuit inside of the LED that we're not going to depict other than just to draw a box, and we'll have D in and D out, and uh, ground coming out the other side. So kind of like an internal box here. We'll just draw that up to there. And uh, let's draw that inner box. Kind of like that, I guess. All right, and then... See, I can do art, kind of. Just keeping it simple. It's like internal connections, right? All right, and then we're going to draw our pins. Uh, let me move this guy out of the way. Hey there, A squared. How are you tonight? Today? Good night. Good night. One of my kids going to bed already. Wow, going to bed early. It's summer. What are you doing going to bed at 10.30? Shouldn't you be up till midnight? <laughs> okay, this is going to be VCC, right? Uh, what does the data sheet say? VDD. I guess it's capitalized? Sure. Which pin number is that? One. Electrical type. Power input. Okay, so ro rotate that guy. Okay, and then I need to, like, move that VDD. How do I move that element of it? Hmm. Beats me. Push pin name size. I don't know what that... Okay, so I don't know how to... Um... Move the text for that. 
Let's at least move this out of the way. Hmm. There. And yeah, there's that VDD. I don't know, don't know how to move it. I thought it would be here under the pin properties. But, okay, I see the size. Can I just set that to zero? I mean, it kind of did what I wanted. <laughs> um, can I change the size of the other text on the other side? I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, that seems like a hack to me, but I'll go with it. So this one is going to be ground, right? It's pin 3. Power input. Name, text size 0. Rotate it goes here. All right. This would be DN. That's pin four. That's an input. Okay, and then this has got to be pin three, or pin two, right? D out. Beep, beep. Yep. It is an output. Cool. I like to put it there, but to make it smaller, can I just scale down the text? I can. How about like 0 0.4? It's really tiny. I can do something like that. Okay. Let's make another 0 0.4 text size. Text says, um, beep, beep. SK sixty eight twelve. Put it right here. All right, let's save that and then let's attach the footprint that I'm making. Or maybe I should attach the footprint once it's done. Yeah, maybe we keep this safe for now and work on the footprint next. Okay, footprint. Move these things out of the way. Okay, for the footprint, I need two pads, right? that are 1.34 off of, well, divide by two, off from the center, and... Okay, that's the size of it, but where's the offset? Huh. The whole chip is 2.8, but... Where are the pins... Where's the measurement... Where's the measurement right here or right here? <laughs> it looks like we're miss missing some measurements, doesn't it? Doesn't the data sheet have a pad schematic? Mm -hmm. It does down here. Oh, there we go. So 0.68 to this, and that's 0.820. It still I feel like we're missing some dimensions here. <laughs> like what's well we okay, from the other sheet we know how big this is. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to do some mental math to, to figure this out, right? If the pin itself is 0.68 and the recommended um, uh, solder mask is 0.82, then the difference between that divided by two will be the offset how much from the pad to the end of the solder mask. And then from there, point th half of this or point three four is to the center line. <sighs> okay, so point six eight from point eight two. Point eight two minus point six eight. Point eight two minus point six eight. It's point one four divided by two. So add that to point three four. Okay, so it's point four one from the center line up to the pad. <sighs> Rusty as in literal Rust, or Rusty as in the Rust programming language? As, uh, I guess it, we're, it's both, but yeah, really it's Rust programming language. So I am going to be working on the firmware on other streams, but today it's the PCB design. The firmware is going to be written in Rust. Um, I can show you just glimpses of what I've written already. So here's our main. So um, it's a no standard, so it's embedded. And uh, we have our own heap already. And I basically have everything under this keyboard. And there are two parts of it. The initialization where we access all of our uh, hardware peripherals. And I'm leveraging this um, peripheral access crate for the microcontroller I'm using, the RP2040. Which I didn't write. The RPRS guys did that. And um, when we run, we're setting up timers to... Uh, for various things and um, blinking an LED. We're polling various things. We're sending a greeting message from one chip to the other so that um, each one knows its role. And we also have a programmer written. So uh, part of this poll is to scan the keys. Also, we're polling the USB to the host and we're also polling the serial port connection between controllers. So I've been working on this in the last 10 streams or so. And um, the, the firmware's going pretty well but where, where i was falling behind was on the pcb design so i decided i work on that today yeah i like those puns too that's why I'm, sometimes i say my skills at this and that area are kind of rusty ah, ah. why well, i'm calling it the rusty keyboard it's going to look kind of scuffed i'm sure because it's the first time i've ever made hardware i'm a software guy what do you expect Okay, I'm needed, I need to replicate this, or alternatively, this, but in this footprint editor. So I should just draw this box, right? The size of that box is 3.2 by 2.8. Let's just draw that. That will be using... Um, I guess a silk screen? No, not silk screen. A user drawing? Because we just want to depict its area to start with. So 3.2 by 2.8. So that would be like x is minus 1.6, y is minus 1.4, 1.6, So. I need to go down to grid of 0.1 for that. 1.6 and 1.4. Like this. Oop. It would be helpful if I was clicking on the right tool. And then, yeah, the dimensions I want are 3.2 by 2.8. So that's how big the thing is. All right, and then um, 
off of that we have these pads which are how big I'll position them in a second but we know what they're one 1.34 by 0.68 so um, I want to add a pad and it's 1.34 my memory serves yes and then 0.68 Zero point six eight. There we go. And pad shape is rectangular. The pad number. It doesn't really matter. I guess we're doing um, pad one first. Technical layers, paste, and mask. Is, are those what I'm supposed to? Yeah, it, the copper. There, okay, yeah, that's correct. Um, I guess we added the pad twice. So cal let's calculate that where exactly that would sit. So from the center line, 1.6 uh, minus 1.34. Or is it from the center? Hold on, what, up, what happens if I put zero, zero here? Planning to eventually do a headphone, but not yet sure how much you're going to spend building it. Plan to buy drivers and buy housing. Yeah, I, that sounds good. I'm doing mine in steps, so I'm not going to do the final keyboard right now. I'm doing a kind of a proto keyboard where it's like got six keys on each side, so I don't have to do a whole lot of, bunch of soldering, but just something to test things out with. I'm actually going to put like probably different connectors, TRS and the USB and just see, wire them both and just like see which one I like better or which one um, I end up going with. Depends on how well the soldering goes and how well, you know, if I play around with it, how much I like it, that kind of thing. Okay, where is this going to put it? Okay, so it is from the center of the box. So I want the center of the pad to be half of 1.34 subtracted from half of 3.2 so 1.6 minus half of 1.34 so negative 1.6 minus 1.34 divided by 2 it, what's cool is you can kind of do math in um, that window and I picked that up not by my uh, figuring out myself but from my YouTube video all right, so I wish I had written down the number. I guess I'll have to do it again, right? It's, I should have written it down. 0.34, okay, actually it's 0.82 minus 0.68. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't have to write it down. I have it in the calculator here. 0.41, that's the offset from the center line to the bottom of the pad. Minus half of 0.68. Okay, see if I can do this right. If I can do this right, I'll be really happy. So, minus uh, 0 0.41 minus 0 0.68 divided by 2. Ooh, I did it. <laughs> Wonder if you can name constants? I don't know. Are you gonna do reversible USB C? You can just plug it in either way. Yeah. The way it works is the pinout of the connector gives you like two grounds, two D pluses, two D minuses, two VCCs or VSSs. And so you just wire them all together. And so whichever one, whichever way you plug in, uh, you're you're um, plugging in four of the eight conductors. That's how it works. Um, but though, because of that, there are a lot of little pins. So um, my soldering skill is not that great. So I might have an awful time and I might just say, screw it. Just go with TRS, TRS where there's only four conductors. And they're nice and big and all that. Okay, so I want to duplicate that. And um, if it's at Y of 
my negative 0.75. I, I wanted to go to a y of positive 0.75. And 227. Um, I have to take the grid to half a millimeter to do that. There we go. And then that is pin 2. Okay, and then duplicate it again. So it's going to be flipped on the other side. Right there. Um, that's four there, right? And three down here. Three. Okay. Hopefully that matches this schematic. Okay, and this one's got a special cutout. Can I you depict that here? Uh, is that chamfered? Re oh, there we go. Chamfered rectangle. Uh, and I want to rotate that around. There we go. Look at that. That looks perfect. Can I... One thing is, can I check... Uh, Specify how the chamfer, oh yeah, the chamfer size is 20%. What do they say? They say C with a Chinese character. Um, but I can eyeball it. It's more than 20, right? What is it on the physical pin? It's really hard to see. It's really small. I think I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> um... Yeah, we'll just leave it. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is um, draw a cutout for because um, it's got to shine. It's going to be back. It's going to be mounted on the reverse side and shine through the front. So there's got to be an edge cut, and it needs to be slightly bigger than the dimensions of this because it, it's going to sit into it. So this is the back, and this is the front, and the light, light is shining up. It's got to like be a little bit bigger than 3.2 by 2.8. So maybe adding like 0.2 on every side, 3.6 by uh, 3.2, 3.6 by 3.2. Uh, I guess I'm drawing a rectangle on the edge cut layer. 3.6 by 3.2 and then center that guy, right? There we go. So that's the edge cut. And then the thing rests inside of that. Let's see what that looks like. View 3D viewer. Okay, so I have to um, shift the 3D, 3D model around. Um, also, the edge cut is inverted. So how do I depict that? Is it not edge cut? Maybe it's a reverse edge cut? Filled shape? I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I need it to be a hole, not, not that. Okay, that's not it. Maybe it's not edge cut then. If you have a dedicated toaster oven, you could reflow it. Good point. Oh, what what temperature would it need to go up to? Do people actually use toaster ovens to reflow? Maybe I need to pick one of these. That's a keep out area. Oh, I bet I need to do a pad, not a cutout. Yeah, I think... Cutouts the wrong thing. I think I need a pad. And pad type would be a non-plated through hole mechanical. Uh, position zero zero. And it is a rectangular of what did I say? Three point six by three point two. I don't know what the angle is, but let's keep it at zero. Full shape circular. Oh. 
same dimensions, right? Uh, oval, 3.2. Actually, I wonder if it would be better to do four circles and then um, one of these ovals. So you can have an oval and then cut um, cut more out with circles. Actually, not even an oval. Um, I wonder if I can even do it with one of these holes. Anyway, let's just see what it looks like. So yeah, that would be... I mean, right at zero, zero, right? Uh, I need to get rid of that pad five. Okay, so it's there, but it's... I need to offset that guy. Um... Was it footprint properties, 3D model? Yeah, here we go. So I need to move him around a little bit, right? There we go. So he's all lined up. Actually, they, the 3D model I got, the the pins are bigger than they should be, right? Or I should be making the pads bigger, slightly. Anyway, if I turn this around, see, it's supposed to shine through there. Yeah, I need to cut these corners, right? So that it will fit. So let's hide that object. Um, how do I just hide this object? I don't know how to hide just this object. <laughs> Hiding everything when I do that. Oh, just not select it. Everything gets hidden. I guess this is redundant, right? This user drawing. I will keep it. Okay, yeah, by hiding through whole pads. Okay, so... Do I just need to add... A couple more through hole pads, like there, and make them circular. I'll play the through hole. How big to make them, though? I'm just going to guess 0 0.4. We'll leave no copper drill shape and pad shape do not overlap. Okay, whatever. Um, a little bit bigger. Six, maybe. I think I need to go a little even bigger, like a whole millimeter. They've done yourself, but can't help saying that it's a thing. I mean, it makes sense that a toaster oven would work for that sort of thing. You know, I don't know if this is such a good idea. But let's see what it looks like. Put one on each side here. Some quick Googling shows that most people that reflow using a toaster oven do modifications to it. Probably to like, um, be able to roll something through it, I'm guessing, to control the time, maybe? I don't know. Okay, what is this looking like now? 
And then roll it over. I mean, it's getting there. I need to get rid of these uh, cuts here. I wonder if I... Is this a hack that I'm doing it this way? I mean, if it works... I can try it out for the prototype board. They're just going to drill and then dr they're just going to drill five times, right? Create a footprint for mounting. Oh, let's look. Let's check it out. Let's let's learn something. I've placed the cutout in the ECO one layer. Save the footprint, open the footprint library in text editor once in the text editor, scroll down until you find the footprint, then copy the cutout section from the paste into so it's like hacking the actual file in a text editor. Yeah, I know it allows you to draw an edge cuts layer directly, but it was I need like the invert inverted. Unless maybe I need to draw an edge cut, and then an internal edge cut? That's the first thing I tried, right? I tried making an edge cut, but it inverted it somehow. But maybe that was just because of how um, I was viewing it. So, yeah, if I go back and add that edge cut again, right? Let's just add it. An edge cut right here. Right? And then see how it's inverted? Like it cut everything out around it instead of cutting in cutting that part out. But maybe when I put it on the board it'll do it correctly. Hey there, TS Shoss. What's the cut issue? Is that when I add an edge cut, um, it's in the cut is inverted. If I add another edge cut out here, it will actually make sense, right? View this. Now it actually it's not correct again. It why did it do that? Is there an edge cut way out here? No. Is it because I have these references? Maybe that's why. Like, in the wrong spot. What if I put them inside? Uh, I don't know what to do about that. Maybe make this one bigger. I wanted to figure out that this is an internal cut. And keep this, but cut out everything in the middle there. No, it's still not doing it right. <laughs> This rectangle is a, the correct kind of cut. But if I get rid of it... That's wrong. <laughs> Do I make like... Um, how about if I make a tiny internal cut here? Um, what does that do? Nope, I didn't do anything. Make a cutout on the PCB. Thing is, I'm making a cutout on a footprint, not on the PCB directly. I'm just wondering if I place this footprint on the PCB, maybe it'll cut it correctly. Find the reasons for temperature control over time after some more googling. I mean, that's what I was thinking too, that you want to have some more fine grain control over the temperature. Because you had no cut outside of that one, it should work when you add the footprint to the actual board. It's just weird that it's um, doing what it's doing. I don't need all those way that far out, so maybe just fix this again. Put that. Oh, I can get rid of this, right? 
put that nearby. Okay. Let's just see what it looks like when I put it on the board somewhere. So let's go back to the symbol editor and hit, look at my nice symbol for that. Isn't that nice? Symbol properties will associate a foot, the footprint with it. Look at that. It's like automatically selected and then um, hit OK and then um, I feel like that should go somewhere nearby and save it. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, this, we don't have a 3D viewer here. I just need to place it now, right? So go to the schematic. Here's the schematic. Let's put Danelli, put that down there. Um, NeoPixel. Oh, there was already a NeoPixel. Well, mine looks m much better than that. Oh, interesting. So, there was already one built into KiCad. I still like my symbol better. None of them actually match the exact one I have, so I'm going to use mine. But we can compare to those other ones. What do those other ones do? They have D instead of U. I wonder if I should be using D instead of U. I think I should. Okay, no, that one uses U. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep you for the reference. Uh yeah, place it. Okay, let's associate it with the uh, switch there. The text is in a weird spot. Grid one quarter. There we go. Let's put it there. Um, we need to wire it up to something. So I have the pin out here, right? I need to reserve, I calculated it before, I need to reserve 10 GPIOs for the key matrix, but and I only need one for the NeoPixel. So if I just count down the line here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need two more for this for the key matrix, and then one for the NeoPixel. I think I can use from this, and I can reserve these analog pins because they also could be used for spy if I need that. Right. So how about I just arbitrarily pick GPIO eighteen, which is on whatever pin this is, thirteen down. 14, 15, 16, 7, pin 17, pin 17. So um, that means I need to go back to the symbol editor, open this guy and add a pin 17. Am I counting wrong? I already have 18. That wasn't next to that one. I mean, not 18, uh, 16. I think I'm counting wrong. Oh, because I added extra pins below that one. Okay, so it's... 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Pin 19. Is... I, yeah, I should move away from using these conventions to just using the GPIO conventions, right? So GPIO 18. Or I could just label it NeoPixel or something. Uh, 
right there. What's the name size for default here? 1.27. Okay, so let me fix this one. There we go. So save that guy. Um, edit him. Update from library. I got the GPIO pin. Let's route that GPIO pin over to um, the data in. Which was that pin four, right? Uh, I can't quite click on that. How come it did, didn't let me click exactly on that? Because of my grid setting? I guess so. Maybe I should fix that on the symbol. Save. Edit. Oops. Edit. Update. Okay, and now it's on there? Yep. All right, cool. I'll get rid of these wires in a bit. I'm just lazy. Uh, move this guy a little bit over. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I need to go to point one three. Get that to match up. Okay, and then um Oh, I need another pin here. Um to do this right, I think I want to, I want the raw pin, which is right after ground, which is so it's 27. I think I don't need that one. So back to the symbol editor we go. How do I resize that without moving it? Drag a corner of it? Yeah. Okay, add a pin, 27, raw, power, output. Save. Update from library. And we got a raw pin. Uh, it should not be connected to that wire, though. All right, wire this. Don't cross the wires. <laughs> this over to here. Ah. Can I just move that? There we go. Yeah, better would be to name these nets, but um, I'll do that later. Right now, I'm just having fun drawing wires. Okay, so then uh, this one's not connect right now. And that need, needs to go, that one needs to go to ground. Looks good. Good enough for... What, what do they say? Good enough for government work? Ugh, lines are, my lines are ugly anyway. 
Ugh, making it worse. Anyway, save before we get into too much trouble. Okay, so then I'm going to go to the PCB. Which I don't have open yet, so let's open it. See you, Bix Place. Anna Kim Luke, how are you doing? Remember my BRB GIF for the doggo jumping and, bar and barking? Yeah. It's been a while. I don't really bother. The, the dog doesn't really bark that too much at night anyway. That was the one I used to stream during the day, and the dog would make a lot of noise. Okay, update from schematic. Cool, so there's our NeoPixel. And I kind of wanted to mount it on the reverse side, right? So, um, is that F to flip it? Yeah, so it mounted on the reverse side, and it's going to poke through right around there, I think. Well lined up with this guy so that's at um, DX or X 114.3 so like roughly right there there we go I placed it cool and back copper Maybe we want to turn this around. These are going to have to cross each other, right? I think I'm going to end up using a via to go through this. I'll, I'll, this is only just a rough thing. I'll fix this later, right? So, um... X over to can you get make it through there? You make it through? Yeah, you could make it through. Oh, almost. Almost got it through. <laughs> now go down. No, no. You can do it. It doesn't want to get too close to those holes. I'll go around the other way. How do we make it down there? I guess I gotta click. Okay, click. And then I'll click again. There, did it. <laughs> and then, um, uh, this will bring it close enough and then via it over. Oh, that was the wrong, that was totally the wrong key. X. And then V, right? Yeah. And then there. Okay, and then uh, X, this one's easy. Cool. Let me do the board, the checks. Okay, I got some errors. Clearance violations. Oh, okay, I guess things are too close there. Anyway, I, that doesn't really... I'm not really concerned about that right now. I want to see what the 3D model this looks like. Okay. It actually looks good. Look at that. So, the idea is that the LED shines through the board, which it's doing, right? If I flip this around, there's where it's mounted on the back side. Oh, I forgot to make... I, I need to make the... um pad slightly bigger than what the pins are going to be. But yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see, but it um I guess if we move we look into the interior of the board here and I zoom in, you can see it kind of goes through the board halfway and there it doesn't go through all the way, and that's what I see on these proto boards that I have. They kind of they're mounted on the reverse side and they poke up a little bit 
out the back, but in but they also poke through the board a little bit, and then, um, yeah. So the the edge cut actually worked. I can remove those holes, and then I'll probably fix my violations here, right? So let's go back to the 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 footprint, and I'll just delete these. Just go by the edge cut, right? So save that. And then, do I need to update it in the symbol editor? I think I do. I have to select this. No, I don't select it. I just go to symbol properties and I do, um, do I just click that again? I don't know if I need to do this. And then um, PCB and do um, update from schematic. What is it? Footprint. Do I need to just tell this to update from library? Yes. There we go. And then run the DRC again. Okay, still got errors, but not as many. It doesn't like that I'm cutting the pad. I mean, I wouldn't like cutting the pad either. So I guess I got to um, make the edge cut, not cut the pad. How does that work exactly on these things? Oh, right. The pad, the pad shouldn't go all the way to there. It should kind of go to the edge cut and no further. Hey there, Phantasmics. How are you doing? It's been a while. Thought you dropped by working on some online college course. Nice. Yeah, so I'm doing sort of like a hardware software project this time. Um, and I've been doing the software up to like the last 10 streams, and now I'm kind of dipping into the hardware side. So call it the rusty keyboard because the firmware is all in rust. This is kind of what it looks like. So this is polling the serial port. Um, here's the key scanning matrix where we set a column low and then read the row and then set the next column and read the row and this is just a one by two that's why it's we're not doing more than two columns and we're only doing one row but yeah it's all in rust and i'm doing the firmware my, or doing the hardware also by myself so need to fix that violation i need to go back to the footprint i think i closed it no i didn't Okay, here, I need to move, I need to adjust these pads so they're not so big. Um, I guess I can just click and drag and fix the... And I wanted to make them bigger anyway, right? Well, maybe I just eyeball this thing. So... If the size of this... How am I adjusting this? Uh, let me undo that. Rust is not Python. Rust is its own programming language. It's like Python, but see, I would say it's like... What is it? OCaml. Combined with... Um, like C++ and C. It's it's kind of sort of like a mix of syntaxes from different languages is what it feels like to me. But I, I hear it's been, it was heavily inspired or derived from OCaml. That's going to be your second guess. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it looks like C or C++, but with maybe different keywords. FN instead of, um, or, well, that's a bad example. Let me say it differently. Differently, The syntax looks familiar and close to other programming languages that you might know, like C and Python. It just has its own unique keyword, so FN for function. Um, one weird thing about Rust compared to like C and C++ is instead of saying if something is constant or not, you reverse it and you say mute for mutable. So this means it's not constant. This means, uh, so let is like in JavaScript or TypeScript, right? Where you're declaring a variable. 
and you're saying this is the name and it's not a constant. So if you don't have the mute keyword, then it is a constant. So it's like in reverse of what you might be used to with C or C++. But like this is a function call, right? And this is a, a class name like in C++. So that some things are kind of familiar if you know those languages. Uh, one thing that is not like Python is it has semicolons, right? There's no semicolons in Python. The first Rust compiler is written in OCaml, yes. All right, so I moved that pad, and I just want to be, I want to extend it, really. So what if I edit it and then just make its size like 0.2 in each dimension bigger? Um, Hold on, maybe the data sheet. The data sheet had a recommendation for this. Why don't I use that? Where did I put that? Over here. Yeah, okay. 1.8 by 0.82. There we go. 1.8. Actually, what I should do is put it there and set its size and then move it to the left. Or really resi resize the right end of it. Um, 0.82. Uh, 1.8. There we go. And then, can I just move that? There we go. That's what I want. And I got to do that three more times. No big deal. I'll have these numbers memorized in no time. Then kind of clip. I'm kind of clipping the pad so that it's not going to get cut by that edge cut. Actually, I forget which one is the edge cut. <laughs> Which one's the edge cut here? Uh, what if I hide the edge cut? Okay, that's the edge cut. Okay, so I need to move it beyond that edge cut. There we go. 1.8.82. And then do that. Nice. Okay, so save that. Footprint has been updated. Go into the PCB, right? And then we're selecting that. Edit. Update footprint from library. Update. Close. Nice. So then run the DRC again. No errors. I have a warning, though. Self screen clipped by solder mask. Okay, so it's the reference U2. Oh, it's right this thing. Okay, so I can just select it and move it. Um, I don't want it to be in the edge cut. I want to just move it around top of that other guy. That was the... Well, no, there's a solder trace over it. What if I just put it right here? Where's the best place for it? I don't know. What do they, what do, they do for this board? They probably don't even have it marked. Yeah, they don't even bother to put it on the silk screen at all. This is on the back side. Nothing else is sitting there. Why don't I just put it there? There. DRC check. No warnings, no errors. Ship it. <laughs> okay, cool. So I would basically do that for all the switches I, I have here. Um, I, didn't cons I didn't take a whole lot of time routing this because I know I'm going to have to change it anyway. Because we're, we're going to have to put, put traces for all six of these in there. And um, when we do the real keyboard, it's going to be even more challenging. You could place it over the trace. There's a solder mask over the trace. That's, yeah, you're right. I was just thinking I might... I, I don't want it to be hit this edge cut, at least. And these are also cuts. So I, don't, I wanted to avoid that. And I was trying to remember if there's anything significant about these boundaries. And I think those are for the switch, and they're on the um, other side. So it doesn't matter. So if I were to just show the back layers then it's fine, right? And we don't really care about that fab marker anyway, so we're fine. 
it's silk screens on top of that trace, but like you just said, it's fine. Is this that's undo. Is there a flipboard shortcut? No, but I'll do the menu option. So there's if you're looking at it from the back, that's what it looks what it looks like. You mount the switch socket there, and we mount the LED there, and there's a hole that the LED body sticks through, and we'll have a solder mask over the trace. We're, we're fine with that. Uh, let's hide the fab laters. I don't think I need to see that. Cool. I have some time to do the rest, do some more work here. Um, I might just delete all the traces and start over. And um, one thing I want to do is move the diodes closer to the switches. It doesn't really make sense that I put the diodes out here. Is there an edit to just delete all traces? Global deletions. Delete tracks and vias. All layers. Yes. There we go. Back to the rat's nest. <laughs> Rat's nest is the term for like all these lines that um, move when you move the component around. And then you, what's it's kind of cool is you can move it around. You can kind of see where a good placement is. So like if I place this, like maybe like you can even rotate it in place, right? If I put it here, it's kind of nice because um, this trace is easy to route. And then this one is easy to route, right? And then the same, same thing for this. This is for switch two. And you can kind of see when it's rotated wrong, the wires cross. It rotated correctly, it looks like really nice. Um, I'm going to want to put it outside the switch, right? So like right there. Ideally, I want to make these all consistent, so I should really just do one switch and then copy it, I think, right? Although, can you copy it and associate it? with the other components. I don't know if you can. Maybe I just do it by position. Um, anyway. You put it above, not below. Is there a difference? This trace is longer that way. Why would you place it below? Or above instead of below? Oh, because it's closer to the uh, that side of the switch. Okay, good point. Um, is that the solder? Is that the silk screen? Okay, the silk screens are going to collide. But I can move those around, right? In fact, I kind of want the diode, I want the trace to be just like that, right? I can move these around a bit. I can put that one there, right? And I can put this one. I don't want to get too close to the edge. Put that right there, maybe. Hey there, Romania height. A raw mania height. Nice painting skills. Yes, we're painting a circuit board. So yeah, I think I'm, I have been sold on this idea of placing the diodes closer to the switches top than the bottom. Yeah, I kind of want to do that and then move these up, right? Actually, that looks even better. I'll just move the K. I don't know if I even need the K. I think the K marks the, an is that the anode? I forget which, which one's the anode, which is the cathode. It's marking which one is the uh, ground side of the diode. Switch to over to there. D2 marker there. The error is just that they're unconnected. Yeah, we haven't connected things. Yeah, fine. Could put the switch component label inside the switch area. Um, yeah, I guess so.
I don't I can't put it in a hole. Um could I just put it there? Okay, I have to tell one of my kids to go to bed. <laughs> Hold on. I'll be right back. I'm back. <laughs> hey there, Endurin. How are you doing? We're doing some um, PCB work today. So, I don't know. What do you think, Zarian? Put it under the socket? Or put it outside here? I don't, I don't want it to get confused with the... Um, oh, wait, this is the front side mask anyway, right? No, that's the... That's not even a solder mask. What is that? What is... Oh, because it's selected. We can't see that. Yeah. Well, that's the front silk screen. And this is the back. So I can put it there and it won't get confused. Okay. So maybe it... Um, makes more sense to put it here. So that when we mount the socket, we can still see the silk screen that it switched one. And then let's do the same thing with switch to just for consistency. Yeah, and I still need to add an LED, an LED for this switch to one thing at a time. Back to the schematic we go. Is it time to clean up the schematic and use net net um, net labels? I think it's time. Enough of these wires, right? Can we do global delete of wires? Can I select all all wires and delete them? There's no way to select all wires. So much room for labels on this board. Yeah. You know what that means? Probably my my top viewers will end up having things on the silk screen because <laughs> why not i mean we can do this right why not i can do it it's my board we could put endurn over here why not what's the part number of the switch that i'm using good question Um, I don't have it on my parts or bomb list because I bought some prototype parts from Adafruit and they haven't, um, I had bought them before I started the project, so I didn't bother to update that. But where would I, have, where would I find that? Maybe on the schematic? Uh, let me find it. This guy, right? Yes, so I'm representing the switch by the socket, which is a Kyle hot swap socket. Um, because it's a hot swappable socket, you can put any switch you want on it. So as long as it's Cherry MX compatible. Um, I'm going with the MX for now, although I also am considering the chalk, the Kyle chalk. So to answer your question, literally, uh, Riddick, the part number is a Kyle MX hot swap. So if we search that, I can get an exact one for that, right? There we go. So any of these will get you exactly the part. I mean, um, although these these are the low, low profile chalk ones. I don't know why that shows up in the image search. I guess because they're very similar. 
There we go. We can get 25 of them for $5. <laughs> I have like a cut tape of 10 of them right now, or 20 of them, I think. It's just plastic with some metal bits on the end. It's not really, not really that big a deal. You could probably 3D print the plastic part. The metal, getting the metal in there would be a lot harder. But yeah, that's what it is. Beep, beep. Uh, close that. Uh, okay, that. Um, yeah, I need to delete all the wires. Can I just select? This doesn't select wires. Highlight wires. Can I just delete? I can't delete all the wires. Shouldn't there be like an easy way to select and delete all wires? This seems like tedious to have to do this. How do I remove the highlight? There, that's how we do it. You have a strip of 500 transistors? What are you going to use those for? I thought it was bonkers that I, the other day, bought 100 of these diodes. These 1N4148s. 40, but it only cost me 5 bucks. Diodes are cheap. Bet you those transistors you have are cheap also. This is a bit tedious, but not that bad. This will teach me not to use wires on the schematic. But to always use nets, because they are cleaner. Right? Bits in your hand, you're making a computer. I'm kind of making a com well, I'm using a computer. I'm making a peripheral, the peripheral, I'm making a big, very big complicated peripheral for a computer that sits inside of here. So in a sense, I'm making a computer that fits in my hand too. You're saying the entire strip of 500 transistors fits in your hand? Okay. So what makes sense to me is to put the diodes kind of close to the switches. In fact, can I connect them directly? Well, it's probably better to actually use a wire for this, right? And then also put the diode near the switch. I mean, the, the LED near the switch too. I'm gonna need more space, so you guys can move away. I don't know, how do I wanna arrange this? It doesn't, I can't make it like a rect nice rectangular shape, but this set kind of goes together, right? Let me um, just pull the plug on these for now. And we're just going to make one of them and then duplicate it five more times, right? Okay, I think my I think I have problems like that because my grid is is bad. So let's fix the grid setting. It's like too fine, right? Set it back to How come they're in millimeter really they're in inches but put this back so it actually sits on the grid. That's sitting on the on a grid point, it kind of is. This is not though. I should fix this in the symbol to make it sit on a grid point. Let's do that. Um, save symbol editor. I closed it. No, I didn't. Here it is. So what was the grid here? Point five point oh five inches. 
So let's do the same one here. There we go. And then I'm just going to move this guy like that. Put it back on the grid and then do the same thing with this. I'll fix the... Um, this in a second. There. Cool. That's good enough, right? Maybe... F okay... That, I kind of liked it there. Well... Let's go to half the grid. So I can move him up. Sure. Okay, that's good enough. Now, can I edit this and update it from the library? I sure can. Okay, and then I can delete that. Now it should be grid aligned, which is better. Okay, nice. So, wire that. Um, so, I think the way I was designing this is this is a row, and then this is a column. And then this is an internal connection for the switch, right? Yeah, that's an internal net for that switch. And just select all, select all, and place it to the grid. Um, but I, I don't know. I can't I? I don't know if I can. Sorry, Endure, and I should have tried that before I did all that work. D by four is the one you used to work with a long time ago. Oh, point one inches. So I guess I'm at half that. Were you looking at some keyboard connector between the halves? Um, what were we looking at when you wrote that? I'm not sure. You mean, um, what was on the PCB here? If, if anyone's wondering what this is, this is the footprint for one of these switches. Right? Um, you can see it next to the, there's this, there's a populated one here and unpopulated. So, um, it's hot swappable. You can just unplug it, right? So how it works is you mount on the back these uh, sockets. Am I pointing to the correct thing? Right here. This this is a socket, right? And then it um, pokes through with, with through holes here, and you plug the switch into that. Right? And then also on the back, next to the um, sockets, you also mount the LEDs, and they also shine through, they also poke through these holes so that the LED shines up through the um, keycap. So what we're seeing here on the PCB is this is where we're mounting on the back side the socket, and we're also mounting the LED on the back socket. And um, on the front, you push the switch on top of that. Looking in the 3D viewer maybe makes more sense. So there's where the diode's mounted. Uh, that is where the Kyle socket is mounted. There's where the LED is mounted. And um, there are holes where the switch pokes through. And there's also a hole where the LED light shines through. And there's also these three other holes. Um, the switches I have, this there's just a plastic peg that that pokes through the board there and these i guess on some switches you have other pegs uh the ones that i have don't actually have those pegs so if i was just always going to have the kind of switch that i bought uh samples of i wouldn't even need these holes but i suppose I, if i do come up if i do find some switches that have pegs here i'd want to have the holes otherwise it wouldn't fit <laughs> Oh, the audio jack over here? That's just like on the corn keyboard I have. So, um, see that, that audio jack there? That's the connection between the two halves of the keyboard. It's sort of abusing an audio jack to make it a power and signal bus. So, um, 
That's probably... Oh, you're look, we were looking at the schematic, I think, and you saw that. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, this thing over here, this audio jack, is not really audio jack. And our, not, we're not using it for audio. We're going to be using it to pass power, ground, data in and data out from one controller board to the other. Kind of like how I have it wired up here. This one's power, the red one. Black one's ground. And then uh, the green and yellow are data in and data out that are crossed. So the data in of one is the data out of the other. Yeah, it's just a wire interface. We're, we're abusing an audio jack. Uh, alternatively, I might um, use USB-C. So and I actually have, for this prototype board, I have, a, I, have, I have enough room for that. So I could place, like, uh, undo that. I could place this connector, like, up here. Oh, my grid is wrong. Grid... Let's do that one. That's still not right. This one. So I could put the connector, that connector there, and I could put a USB-C connector here and just wire them all together, and I could have two ways you could plug, it, plug the two boards together. I could add an RJ45 too, I got enough room for that. <laughs> How much do you want to bet I forget to delete your names from my, the silk screen on my board and I actually print it out and they're still there? If I was like still an affiliate on Twitch, I could like say, um, if you sub to me, I will put your name on the silk screen of my board. <laughs> Good thing I'm not an affiliate anymore. <laughs> okay, so I'm, uh, let's say this. I'm still um, working on the schematic, right? I'm over here. They're on, nicely on the grid now. Yeah, I wanted to mark these. This was the row. So I can do that with these um, labels, right? Global label? Can I use a global label? So this is row zero. And rotate that guy. There we go. And we'll wire him. Oops. Like that. Actually, I don't even know if I need a wire. Can I just hook it directly? Can I move this guy onto him and they become the same net? Let's see why not. And then I can do the same thing for column zero. And just put him over here. Right? And then um, this is power and ground, right? So I have those around here somewhere. Power port plus five volts or yeah, plus five volts. That's what that is, right? Which means I should probably then move the symbol out a, a little bit down or over. And where, whoop, that's not what I wanted to do. Where would the, where's a good place to put this plus five volts? Maybe rotated. That would work if I moved the U2. Maybe... Uh, maybe down to here? There we go, that looks nice. Can I move all this stuff together? I can! Look at that. Because I want to kind of get this into a compact unit that I can copy a bunch of times. How does that look? You need a ground power. Where's ground? G and there we go. Ground. Let's attach it right there. All right. And um, does it make sense to have all the LEDs chained together and then all the switches separate? I kind of think it does make sense. So if we do like the LEDs in one section, right? And um, if I ch were to chain this together, so duplicate that. That's actually what I would want to do. Um, then I don't really need all these grounds, right? I could just have one ground. 
That's kind of cool. Do you see how it made a wire for it when I moved it? I could just do this and then delete that and then wire this all the way through to that. That's exactly what I want. All right, so then let's duplicate this again. And there we go. Duplicate it again. And two more times. And then wire all the way through. I like it. And then we're going to um, not connect the data out of the end of the chain. So this front is going to be NeoPixel. Yoink. How's that? Is it correct that pin 2 and pin 4 are connected? Yes. Yeah, they connect there. Um, you'll see that when I copy to the PCB, it's going to put a rat's nest line between the two, saying that those two are the same net. And I'm not naming them. I'm not going to bother to name them. It's just the interconnect between two of, the, of these pixels. Uh, auto annotate. I'm probably going to want to renumber it because I'm, I probably want the, well, actually, I guess it doesn't matter too much. U1 and yeah, so the pixels start at U2 because U1 is for the microcontroller. I guess it's fine. Or maybe instead of U1, I have a different convention for NeoPixel. To align with switch. That's kind of, that would make more sense, right? I would want to put one with one, two with two. Let me, uh, f let me go back to the uh, symbol editor, right? What if I go to symbol properties and I change, can I change the reference? Yeah, okay, let's change the reference. Now, this is my board and I can do whatever I want, right? So I can say NP for NeoPixel if I wanted, right? And we could move that to something that makes more sense, like over here. And that means that I can update all of these guys. Can I update them all? Change symbols? Yes, update the reference. Yeah, update them all. Oh, look at that. It did it. And then I can renumber them. There we go. I got NeoPixels 1 through 6. Oh, I missed some chat. Hey there, Brew Rousing. I'm building my own keyboard. Thank you, Endurin, for the link. Is the firmware ready? We have some parts of the firmware running. On this breadboard here, I've been testing out parts of the firmware. So, for example, I'll put the window back onto the firmware screen. If I press this key, it's a Q. If I press this key, it's a W. So we have under there, I have the basic key matrix scanning prototyped. I just need to add all the rest of the columns and rows and maybe clean this up so that it's extensible to like n by m rows and it just expands to that maybe with a macro i don't know maybe with loops um i have done the um blinking of the led as you can see i have done um the usb interface so it's both a serial port and a human interface device I'm using the serial port class on USB so that I can uh, get um, diagnostic information. So, for example, if I go to this screen and do cargo run, this is a, a helper program that connects to the serial port from the host side. And then every time I hit a key here, you can see the, um, the, key, re the key down report, right? So if I hold this key down, it's 20. Release it, it's back to zero. 
hold that one down is 26. If I hold both of them together, it's 20 and 26. This is the number of scans per second, which is insane. We're doing this at 90,000 hertz. Um, if I hit caps lock on my other keyboard, Windows tells my keyboard with a report in the reverse direction to turn on the caps lock light, which we don't have, which I should probably think about adding to the board, <laughs> like an underglow or something. So yeah, um, we can support the serial class over the USB and also the human interface stuff in both directions. So this is um, sending to the host and there's a receiving from the host somewhere else. I think it's this one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, bits and pieces are done. The part that I really liked doing and getting to work finally is the programming part. So I have it so that if you program the left-hand side keyboard, it automatically forwards the program to the right-hand side and then they both reprogram together. So that's all in this programmer where um, first we forward the program and then we're kind of writing one sector at a time and then at the end we're, um, we're, we're pausing between sectors here and at the end we complete our flash cycle. And yeah, so a lot of little, little bits are done. Um, this is how we f finish and reprogram. We copy from our staging area in, f in the middle of flash to the beginning of flash overriding our own program. And then we go into an infinite loop on purpose because the watchdog will trigger a reboot and we set up the watchdog in advance. Have you fixed the 100 buffer issue thing? Which issue was that? Was that the size of my ring buffers? Because I did fix that. They're now um, a more respectable size of 2 kilobytes. <laughs> Just 12 more of those words when you have a full A to Z keyboard? Yeah, I don't want to do a full keyboard for my very first PCB. Um, I expect that this PCB is going to be hard enough for me to make um, just with six keys. So basically, I want to get to my feet wet and actually send it out to a board house, make it, have it built, and then make sure I didn't cause a sort short circuit in the design. And then when I'm confident that it's working, or maybe I sort out some issues, then I, I print the real thing, which I'm still envisioning is going to be kind of like the corn. So we'll have like 36 keys, like 18 on each side. So three by five with th three thumb keys. Um, you can see there's a controller and a TRS link, which I have here. So anyway, those are the LEDs. I like how I did that. That's nice and in a, in a chain like it should be. Let me do the same thing with the switches. So if I want to have like basically two, I was thinking about this before the stream. Um, what if the thumb row is a column just logically? So we have like six columns and three rows. And then I was thinking, well, it we have to delay when we're, we we go from one column to another. So what if we call these rows and then these columns? Because, you know, if I turn it 90 degrees, now they're columns instead of rows, right? So what if we have three columns and six rows? So that means if, if we're scaling down to two by three, that would be two columns and three rows, right? So kind of tells me that I want to do this. Same row, but uh, two columns. So that would be um, deleting this designator. Oh, I have to wish someone good night, so I will be right back. Just a, just a quick and good night to one of my kids. Okay, let me move this. Oh, look, it, it fits. So now they're on the same row. I just need to change this to say it's column one. And then, can I do the same thing again? How do I not, how do I unselect that? I don't know how to unselect it. 
Oh well. <laughs> there we go, I got it. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to now go to row one and two, right? So it's like copying this much of it and duplicating that over to here. Okay, so the problem is that the um, column has to leap over the switch, right? So really I kind of want... I know what I'll do. I'll move these a bit down. And I'll move the column to like... there? Yeah, I like this way to do it. And then I'll wire... to there. And... Do the same thing here. There we go. And then I can just cop, whoop, make this one row one. And then just copy this again, right? Duplicate that and place it over here. Uh, I'm just eyeballing it. And do that. There we go. Got my switches done. Hey there, Owen Codes. How are you doing? Tip ring ring sleeve. Yes. There are two rings. With something with the buffer filling and trying to send to the other board, but the buffer was over. Oh yeah, and during the... Um, that was the bug from the stream where I couldn't get the programming to work. I'll show you what the solution was. In the programmer, I had two states, I think. Well, three states. I had inactive forwarding program and commit, right? The solution was to add a fourth state called pause between sectors. The reason is that while the secondary board is reprogramming or writing, erasing a sector and writing, it can't service the serial port. The serial port FIFO is only 32 bytes deep. So the, sec the primary board was sending the next sector and it was quickly overflowing the FIFO on the receiver end of the second controller. So to fix that, I just hacked it. I said, okay, after the primary sends to the secondary a sector's worth of bytes, it pauses for as long as it should take for that secondary board to erase and program that sector. And then it'll start, you know, be available to receive more data. So that's what this is now. We go into this pause between sectors state, and we're basically looking at a timer. And with that timer expires, we go back into the forwarding program state. Simple, right? I could actually simplify this more. If this is unreachable, this could technically be that. And then I don't need this. Hey, I did some coding this stream. How about that? <laughs> yeah, the FIFO issue, yeah. Row goes right, column goes down. I mean, if you we want to be... Um, Accurate? I can just rotate the whole thing. There. Now they're columns and rows. <laughs> just have to rotate the switch around. I think it's arbitrary, right? It doesn't really matter what I call a row and what I call a column. Uh, this does need to be a different row, though. It's all a matter of perspective, right? The only thing that really matters here is um, because in my firmware... where in my in my keyboard um where i do the scanning i have to delay after setting a column low i want to minimize the number of columns so that means the dimension that's shorter i want to be the column dimension so in this one that's this dimension is columns because every time I drive one of these low I have to it's a propagation delay I have to add in there and then sample each of the rows right that that we can do without delay um, so I wanted to because I've already written the firmware I wanted to keep the same convention going so that's why I chose that and then the way I've wired it is that we're um, to make the way it makes sense is you drive the column and um, you sense the row, and so the only way to get from column zero to row zero is to go through the switch and up to the row, and the diode is there to prevent um, ghosting. And since we're driving it low, that means the ground end has to be, um, what is that, the, I always get them swapped. This is the 
anode, and that's the cathode, right? This end with the bar has to be facing ground, which is what it will be when we hit the switch, right? And the row is held high, uh, pulled up. It's pulled weakly high so that um, we sense that as an input. This is an output, this is an input, right? It, it senses high when the switch is not p pressed, but as soon as you press the switch, it grounds this end of the diode, which then grounds the other end of it. Or it, it, it goes up to like whatever ground plus whatever the voltage of the diode is, but it'll still sense it as low um, and then um, not go through this switch by accident because um, uh, if... Um, we don't we want we don't want any current to flow from actually the problem is with ghosting is having it flow from one column to another right so um it would be like if these three switches are held down and we we would then be able to to go over to column 1 from column 0 and that's prevented by the diodes being um reverse bias when you ground the other, the wrong one <laughs> something like that do you want to be chaining your diodes like that I think you caught me in a mistake. I don't want to chain them. Yeah, so I need to push my rows over, don't I? Um, thank you, Sarah Yen. <laughs> See, your name deserves to be on the circuit board because you're helping catch these mistakes. It should be like this, right? And then uh, we wire. We don't... This wire gets deleted. So does this one. Yeah, the diodes are supposed to be per switch only. Right? See, this is why we put Sarian's name on the PCB right there. Because he's always catching my mistakes. <laughs> I should also just award him some points. What would we do without Sarian? We probably have a lot more bugs. Okay, how does this look? Not too messy. I could probably do with some more spacing here. Uh, this is going to pull the wire. I don't want to do that. Um, I move the row. Can I just move the row only? Hmm. And move it out of the way a little bit. Bending the pin a little bit so I can move these over. And then I bend this back. Just give it some more space, right? We've got plenty of space on this sheet. Uh, two grid marks. Okay, that's... I can actually see from the grid marks that that's just right. Nice. So is this correct? The row goes down, and we will go independently through different diodes that connect to the column if you push the switch down. The columns go to one side of all three switches. Yes, I think that's right. So let's um, number everything. So we got switches and diodes match each other, which is good, because they're going to be near each other, right? And then we're going to put a NeoPixel for every switch. Cool. So then um, I need to route the same columns and rows to GPIOs. And what, I had two columns already planned out, so duplicate column 0 and put it there, and column 1, duplicate that and put it there. Right? And then D10 was a row, but I didn't assign GPIOs for the other rows. Right. I had reserved 17 and 18 for that. So let me update, so save and update the symbol for the controller and add those GPIOs. I'm kind of lazily adding the um, GPIOs as I need them. Right. And you guys won't fault me for that, I hope. <laughs> Undo this. Uh, I think I just move this one up. And I'll just move this guy somewhere in the corner. Uh, 
I don't know. Put that in the center. Okay, so we need two more. Actually, can I just duplicate this? I can. Don't want to put them too close together. Three rows, right? So I need a little bit more space. Actually, I could just move this guy up. Cool. So then um, he's... What? On my data sheet. I got too many windows open. Tab, tab, tab. There we go. Okay. Technically he's D19 or GPIO19. I'm just going to go by GPIO and rename those other ones. GPIO19. Okay, and then we'll rename this guy while we're here to GPIO10. Let's do these ones while we're at it. Actually, this one we can name. Um, let's let me. I think this is be more clear if I name them TX and RX zero. So this was RX zero and TX zero. I like that better. Okay, um, two rows, three. Oh, this one's wrong. Pin seventeen and um, that's GPO twenty. So is it 10, 19, 20, 18? I don't know why it's... I don't know why they picked that. I guess to line up with um, some of these other functions. Okay, save. <laughs> I'm glad you guys like your fake internet points. Okay, so update from library. I feel like I'm getting the hang of this. Let's move that guy up here. And move him there. Um, he didn't get an assignment? How did that work? Yeah, it's U1. Okay. So then, here we go. I uh, got row one. Duplicate, rotate. Oh, the pin's not right. I numbered them wrong. Oh, I made a mistake. This is pin 17. And this is pin 18. Save. Edit. Update from library. Update close. There we go. Row 1 goes to pin 17. Row 2 goes to pin there. And then this one was going to go to um, the NeoPixel. So let's copy NeoPixel and put them there. Okay, and then we might as well do the TX and RX and the ground. Okay, so I think it makes sense to me that as you push the um, plug into the audio jack, that the, that the last thing you want is connected is the sheath, right? The last thing you want is the power. So I was going to put power on the sheath. And um, as shocking as it might be, right? So let me grab power, duplicate it, and put it on sheath. Maybe move it a little ways away. And then I'm going to put ground on the tip. I think it makes the most sense for a ground to go through first. And let's move this guy. Let's move him under. Let's give him some space. In fact, let's move these all away from each other. There we go. And then move this guy a little bit away. Okay, and then it doesn't really matter which is which, so uh, let's make a global label, TX. TX is uh, generic. Um, something more specific. This would be like UART. 
TX. Actually, that not even that, right? Um, oops. Let's say you are P two S. I could type primary to secondary, right? Actually, it the the role flips. Okay, so. If the role flips, then the label shouldn't be tied to one versus the other. Um, then what to name it? Well, actually, I know what... I'm going to actually have um, this, like, all labeled left, and then a copy of it for the right-hand side keyboard. So let's just say left to right or something like that. Um, L to R. Duplicate that and make this R to L. To L. Okay, and then if if we're doing the left hand side keyboard, then this is right to left is our receive right, and then. Transmit is left to right. Okay, cool. So I need um, another ground over here, and I'm going to move it out of the way. Hey, someone just set off a firework. Can I, like, bend that? Ooh, that's wacky. <laughs> Look at that. It... Okay, let's just delete that line. <laughs> it's funny how this line drawing tool works. Okay, anyway, um, I need another power... We've been doing 5 volt, but the, uh, that other one is 3.3, right? Um... Let's just rotate that and have it do that. There we go. And then raw is actually the five volt one. Uh, this one. How come the 3.3 is bigger? Is that just an illusion? I think it is just an illusion. Okay, there we go. I think that's correct, and it, and we need to renumber this everything. Okay, cool. Save. Well, it's already twelve thirty. You compared to the schematic for the softful you had made the diodes are in the reverse direction, but the rest of the wiring looks similar. I'm not sure if that's the right or wrong. What thought was worth mentioning. It depends if you're um, driving high or low. So I'm driving columns low. If you're driving the column low, then um, you want that'll be the ground side when the switch is closed. So that's why we orient it. If we were to drive the column high, we'd want to flip the diode around. Now, Jack, you see that the sleeve is ground and the tip is five. No, I wanted the tip to be ground. Did I do it backwards? Tip is ground. Yeah, I want the tip to be ground because I want the ground to go through first. So as you're inserting it, the ground will, the ground from the other board will hit five volts on this board, which is not powered yet, which is fine. It's safe, right? And then um, as as you run through the conductors, your ground and your signals will pass through the signals and the five volts of the unpowered board. And then right at the end, when they all four click into place, ground will be where it should be. And then the power will be in the last one you connect. That, I think that's the safest. So this is where plugging is. The plug is coming left to right, and when it rests, the tip is at the is the ground, and the five volts is the last thing connected. So is that that's that's correct, right? 
That to me sounds like it's the safest, but I mean, I guess I'll just have to destroy a board or two to make sure, right? <laughs> okay, for the purpose of symmetry, I feel like I must do this. <laughs> There we go. And then move this up, maybe. And then move these to the left. The ground is really far away. Too bad that it doesn't... It insists on bending this line here. There. Why am I doing that? Why don't I just delete this line? Put the ground right there. Why not just do that, right? Is that weird to have the ground pointing to the right? I don't know. No one's going to care but me. You're not planning to use any decoupling capacitors for the LED ICs? I um, saw in the recommended uh, thing, what is it, in the data sheet? that they they show decoupling capacitors or power power boost capacitors where is it down here they show capacitors to ground here but i don't really feel like have messing with more surface mount parts so i'm kind of avoiding thinking about it to do this like really safely i'd want to put surface mount capacitors onto the pcb but that sounds like a nightmare right we're talking about adding a surface mount capacitor maybe next to the diode or over here or something. I guess it would make more sense. But I already have enough to worry about surface mounting those LEDs. <laughs> I really don't want to have to add a resistor or a capacitor. So I guess I'm going to see if I can get away with it with the prototype. Um, not having capacitors here. So these are uh, little microcontrollers, right? Um, so this is actually a data line, and um, it, it follows a protocol that you might have seen as I was scrolling through this. It kind of looks like this. You send in um, codes that are self-clocking over this line. So they only recommended capacitors for these guys just to stabilize the power. So well, let's see if we can get away with not stabilizing the power. <laughs> uh, what's the worst that could happen? We might brown out or destabilize the power for the controller. The thing is, I think this raw that we're using, it already has a big capacitor on this board to begin with. Because that goes into a um, power regulator to get the 3.3 out that we need. So I might I might just be good just just riding on the back of the big capacitor that this already has. What are we enjoying, Romania? <laughs> you know what would be a fun thing is whenever I make a mistake and someone points it out. What was I thinking about that? Um, that if I make a mistake and I don't realize what it is until I have the PCB printed and then as I'm debugging it, someone f figures out what I did wrong, then on the next revision, I would put their name in silkscreen right near the error or right near the error, is cor the error correction. <laughs> anyway, um, I've been talking too much. I um, want to get this over to the PCB. So we're going to update from schematic. And then we have all these things to place. Fun, fun, fun. So it makes sense to me that diode 4 would go with switch 4. And indeed it is. I need to reverse it around. Um, oh, my grid is too too wide. Set it to point one, maybe. Yeah. Move that up here. Move that um, above the diode. 
move the switch. Where was I putting that? Off to the side here. Okay, we got a diode placed. And diode 3, why not? Diode 3 goes with switch 3. Right there. How, how close am I placing them? Yeah, this need, let's, we need consistency. Right there. That close. We can actually measure this, right? I can go pull out the ruler. And that is um, between the margins or courtyards, it's 0.3 millimeter. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't grid aligned. That makes sense now. Okay, so what's the distance between these two? I think because the switch isn't grid aligned, right? I need to fix the alignment of these switches so that they're grid aligned. Maybe put a diode silk screen on the bottom so you can see it when you place them. Hey, that's not a bad idea. So you're saying that I would just duplicate this silk screen on the back? What's the key to swap to the back side? I don't have one. You're saying like just put it here too, right? On the back silk screen. Um, why did it do that? It reversed the text. Oh, because it's still on the front. Um, so I expected when I flipped it, it would put it on back silk screen, but it didn't. So I guess I have to add it myself. Um, D1. Like that. Actually, you know what I should do is just update the footprint. No, this is not. This is a separate footprint. But yeah, this is so that when I when when um I'm hold on. Why are we adding this marker here? Is the idea that as I'm uh, soldering it together, I can keep track of which diodes which? If you were to rotate the board again, it would be correct again. It was on the wrong side, right? We want that to be on the back and that one to be on the front. So is this what you meant that I should mark the back so that when I push the wires through the through holes and I'm in a solder, I, I remember, oh yeah, I'm soldering diode one. Oh no, you meant something else. You said put the diode cell screen on the bottom. So the, the, the actual outline of the diode, well the diode sits on the top though. Not on the bottom. You want the silk screen in the back so you can see the orientation of the diodes. I don't... No, but the, the, the diodes are going to be mounted on the front. Or the top, right? The diodes are mounted on top here. So what's on the bottom side... This is the, weird. It's just the holes poking through. All I need to do is solder them, but yeah. I was I thought you meant that it might be nice to to mark the which diode is which from the back side. Um, I guess I could put them on the back. I thought that it would be okay putting them on the front because I don't. I think I have plenty of clearance there. I, uh, how do I reset my orientation here? Oh, I hit the wrong key, and now it's doing uh, ray tracing. It's this one, right? Yeah. I don't know, you think I should put the diode on the back? I got plenty of clearance to put diodes there. Remember, this is the uh, proto board, so these switches don't need to be next to each other. Although maybe I should put them next to each other, because that's the... Okay, question. Should I put the switches close together like they are on a real keyboard? Like this guy? Or should I put them s separated out like I have been doing? So it's easier to test. I'm thinking space them out. And then if anything, I can measure with, um, with the 
what is it called? <laughs> the precision ruler. How much I can I can bring them together for the final board just to verify that the spacing is right, but have them spaced out here just for ease of debugging. More idiot proofing, the better. So you're saying because there's nothing else on the bottom other than this um, socket, might as well put the diode on the bottom. And then there's no risk of this actually colliding with the switch. I mean, actually one thing I just realized is when you're, um, Popping these switches in and out, you might want to grip the sides, but there's going to be a diode in the way there. I could only, I would grip from left to right only. So it really depends on um, where I'm going to put the second plate above that stabilizes it, right? Okay, I think you've convinced me to put the diodes on the back side. <laughs> we can do that. Um, so I don't need the silk screen anymore, right? Take the entire diode and flip it around. Um, there's a key for that, right? F. It's on the back. Uh, where to put it on the back, though? I guess it's fine to be right in, right up against the the socket, right? Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm going to want to rotate it, though, and put it there. And we don't want the silk screen being over that hole. What does that look like on the 3D viewer? So, um... There it is now. I moved it up there now. I think like, I think that looks fine. It also helps me remember which switch is which because the that one. Oh, but we're off by one. Never mind. <laughs> this U two matches the switch, but the diode doesn't. Actually, does that even match? Hold on. Lip. It doesn't. Um, I have the wrong. Oh, the the LEDs are. This this is that U two is for what? For the LED? I thought I renamed them to NP. Hold on. Did it not update the references? Place footprints. Uh, but what about the references to this guy? That shouldn't be U2, right? Shouldn't that be NP1? Hold on, let's put these side by side. It's a trick I can do, right? I can put that. Actually, it says there U2 not found. Oh, is it because it's the old footprint and I didn't tell it to delete the old ones? So there's a switch one. Okay, that's the problem. Yeah. So, yeah, here are the real no NeoPixels. This is an old footprint that needs to be deleted. Really, it's NeoPixel 1. Flip it and put it over here. Right? Kind of lined up with this guy. Oh, it's in the hole. Hmm. I guess there. Uh, 
Uh, I don't like that. I think I should just go below. A D1 NP1 for Switch 1. How come the, there's no SW1 marker on the silk screen for that? Oh, because it's on the front? I mean, I guess that makes sense. There it is in the front. Why don't I put it... Why did I put it off to the side like that? That could just go right between the holes there. Doesn't that make more sense? Put the switch there. <laughs> and then we flip the board around, put the LED there and the diode there. Have I used embed? No, I haven't. Hey there, Audrey31. What is embed? Okay. I think that that's I think that'll work. And then these match now. The diode matches that one. Cool, we're all matching. Can make this bigger. Okay, we'll fix the rat nest, rat's nest problem in a bit. Where's my diode? Okay, there's my diode 4. Here's my NeoPixel 4. Flip that and move it down here. Oh, look, the rat's nest markers are perfect. I trace These traces will just go straight and straight. Move that down to here. Move this over to here. Flip that guy and move him over to here. Uh, rotate him, right? Yep. Just eyeballing things. I don't know, this is kind of fun, now that I'm kind of not struggling too much with it. Flip. And it goes here. Move that silk screen marker to there, move this one down to here. Flip the diode around, move it, rotate it. Place it. Put the K marker above along with the diode marker. All right. NeoPixel 5. Flip it, move it, place it. Need diode 5. Flip it, move it, place it. Right there. The switch marker moves to here. This moves down to here. This is fun. Right, and I never moved K to begin with, so it's where it belongs. Uh, NeoPixel 5, or th 3, goes here, right? PTO approved. It can be surprisingly satisfying to lay out a board. Yeah, I'm having fun with it now. Writing is the best part of the product. It's satisfying. aligns perfectly. Anyone knows if all PCBs ship to Europe? Is all PCB another sh a board maker? Yeah, I guess we'd have to... If, unless someone in chat knows, we'll have to Google it to find out. Bop it. Twist it. Hit it. All right, users. This is an ARM-based OS platform for C, C++. Um, I'm doing all my firmware in Rust. You want to take a peek? Here's how we're doing the key scanning matrix. Uh, the the parts that are a dead giveaway that it's Rust is functions are FN. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Functions are FN, and then we mark things that are not constants with MUT as immutable. Also, we have unwraps, another dead giveaway. This is that this can fail, and if it does, we panic because I don't expect it to fail. Um, Miscellaneous trivia is that um, I'm not doing bare metal Rust programming. I'm doing Rust on top of foundational crates made by the RPRS guys. And one of those is the Cortex-M library. And we're using that to do uh, busy weights for um, signal propagation. Or I guess you can say st um, we're waiting for that signal to actually 
for the charge to move so that it actually goes low. <laughs> we actually have to wait. The CPU is too fast. It samples it too quickly. So yeah, this, the firmware for this keyboard is going to be in Rust because I'm having a lot of fun on the software side of things doing stuff in Rust. I'm, I'm missing... Oh, I know what I'm missing. The silk screen for that goes there. All right. And I have two left to place. The diode flip move. Place there. Switch moves down to here. I forgot to move this one down to there. Forgot to move these. Oh, the diode's not on the right side. Flip, move, rotate around. Okay, cool. And then I'm missing a NeoPixel. Flip it. Place it. What's cool is I'm when I'm um, doing the CAD tool, I'm actually moving holes and pads around. And when I actually have this printed, it'll be like, everything will be placed where I told them to place it. And if I make a mistake here, it'll be a mistake in the real world. Uh, let's, let's give that a little bit more space between the holes. Okay, how does that look? I haven't compared their prices. Does it have any obvious advantage over something like JLC? You know what I read is that there is a PCB board maker comparator site. And I forget what it what it is, but I saw it on Contextual Electronics YouTube channel. One of his videos, he recommended that... Um, oh, no, it wasn't him. It was um, John's Basement, I think. One of those YouTube channels, in one of the videos I was watching, they said you can go to a price comparison site for PCBs. And um, that, that's something that, I've rec that I'll probably end up doing. It was a PCB price comparator. I'll probably see it. I think it was PCB Shopper. I'll recognize it if I see it, I think. This might... No, this is probably not it. But... Um, was it all PCB? That's what, that's what you just guys, guys just mentioned, right? This is one board house. We, what we want is like a... It's, it's one of these, right? No, they're, they're also their own fab, right? We need like a comparator thing. I'll have to go back to that YouTube video that I was watching and try to find it again. Um, it might have been PCB Shopper? There's some site where you can, like, get prices from several board houses and compare. I think this is it, because look at all these that you can go with. All AccuTrace, all PCB, Basic PCB, JLC PCB. A bunch of the ones that you never heard of, but maybe they're cheaper. Who knows? That one looks good? Yeah. I'll have to make sure. I don't want to go to some site that isn't recommended by at least one of the community uh you know keycad teaching community people anyway uh back to this i feel like adding another text and say um thanks for your support and then um, I can then put down people's names and anyone else who's nice to me can have their name placed on this proto board down here in the corner <laughs> Um, I do need to have some room for USB connector. Um, I'm not going to do that this stream, but maybe in the, maybe in a bit. Okay. So here, the unfortunate thing is I have to do all the routing for this now, but let's do the easy ones, right? These are both on the back. So on the backside copper, I can just do an 
a wire straight to that. All of these are super easy, right? The diodes and are on the switches. Super easy. X to there, X to there. There, I got six traces down. Okay, that routes everywhere, so let's not do that one. How about this one? That goes okay. Th those are how the di how they're chained, right? Right, the corners are chaining one to the next. And that's a no connect, right? So that one goes to the board. Okay, so I can do this one. There. You have cookies for rousing. Should I add you to the thing? <laughs> Isn't the USB on the controller itself? Yeah, but I wanted to have um so there's the USB one here to the, the but that goes to my computer. The um it's it's the alternative to this uh audio jack. I'm thinking you can I can use a USB C connector to go between keyboard halves, because remember it's gonna be a split I don't know what I just hit. I'm gonna have a, in the end a split keyboard. I'm gonna have two of them, right? And sure I could do the same thing that the corn does with this audio jack between them, but you know, researching stuff online, I've read that some people prefer to have a USB-C. So I could, for this prototype board, I could have a USB-C also wired to power ground and the UART. And I can just kind of play with the two and see which one I like. Um, but I don't, I'm, I'm going to need more time to get that symbol and footprint in. And I'll just do that in a, in a future stream. So what's ne what's next that's easy to route? He switches easy. Okay, that is a row, right? This must be a... Okay. The other diode is the column, right? Yeah. So that's column zero, I think. Column one. Okay, these are kind of placed weird. I think I need to move the switches around to be more consistent. So the three and four need to be next to each other. So one, two, three, four. So really two should go next to one then, right? Can I move everything together? So can I move all this stuff? Ah, almost. I want to move like all of it together. I guess I have to pick the whole... Yeah, there we go. So there's one switch. There's four. I I want to put two next to th next to one. So like that should go. And actually, I could place them. Let's place them close. And then three next to four, and then five next to six. Right. Whoop. I just want to select that key, please. It's selecting the other one too. Dang it. If my mouse collides with the other one, it drags that one too. Here we go. I got it. So that's switch five. So three. I should give it more space. On the final one, I'll have them close together. This one, I'll give myself more space on purpose. Yeah. Four. Five. Um, yeah, we'll make the board a little bit bigger in that dimension. And six. Uh, close enough. Okay, make the board bigger. This is how we make the board bigger. Give ourselves a lot of margin. I made the board bigger. 
What will this be when it's done? It'll be a keyboard. So this project is making my own keyboard. Now, you might be asking yourself, or asking me, why am I only making a six-key keyboard? The answer is this is the first PCB I've ever made, so I know I'm going to screw it up. So I'm going to do um, a simpler design with more space and if um, build up confidence. So um, the first step was to do the breadboard design with just two keys. The next step will be a printed circuit board with six keys and a connector, and then I can actually um, connect the two together. And if that works, then the last, last step would be kind of like this corn keyboard where it's a full um, 36 keys. So we're going from 2 to 12 to 38, or 36. Bottom right to top left, select components that have any part inside the selection box. Yeah, kind of learned that the hard way just now, didn't I? The cool thing is the trace moved with it. Okay, so these should all be in a line now, right? It would help if I had the correct window open. Yeah, see, these all are in a line. Right. These are all in a nice line, and then the other side of the diode should be in a horizontal line. Yeah, look at that. It's like I, kind of like I planned it. <laughs> so then I can wire... Um, over to here, and this one over to there, and this one over to there. And then here's where it might get a little complicated. I gotta go through here, over to there. This one's gotta go, this one can go straight. This one's got to feed. Okay. So already I just realized that um, because of the GPIO placement, these are crossing each other. So I should probably move them relative to each other, right? So three and four should be on the bottom, five and six should be in the top, and one and two should be in the middle, right? Or did I get that wrong? One and two should be on the bottom. Okay, I have them completely flipped. Three and four are in the right place. Five and six should be on the top. One and two should be on the bottom. This is kind of fun, even when I make mistakes. Um, so they should actually go down here, right? And then move these guys up here. Uh, I broke all these traces, but that was on purpose. You cut. You cut and... All right, so then this goes there. And then this goes there. And then I have a sp stray trace here. Cool. Hey, look, we routed the um, rows, now the columns. Straight, oh, it can't go straight down. Um, so I maybe threw a via then. Let's save what I have. So it'll be an ergo kind of keyboard? Yeah, so I really like the corn keyboard I have, so I want to continue that trend, split ergonomic keyboard. How do you prototype the keyboard? What program is that I use? This is KeyCAD. I should actually have a link for that. Let's make one. KeyCAD. That's just keycad.org. That's easy. So add com keycad. Paste. I'll put a little blurb. Uh, Raimu uses KeyCAD for all the hardware design. There we go. Make sure the command works. 
So, like it said there, it's an open source, so free CAD tool for doing not just this PCB layout, but also this schematic that we worked on a little bit earlier. And it also has 3D modeling, so I can look at this in 3D and see what the board will look like. Look at that. So that's where our controller will rest. There's our connector between boards, and that's where our switches are going to rest. And then underside is where we're mounting the sockets, diodes, and LEDs. And the LEDs kind of shine through the board, like or stick through the board and shine through these holes. Neat. Uh, did I answer every question? I think so. All right. I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am. Uh, let me route the columns now. Right. I said I would have to go through a. I have to jump over that trace. So let's do it with a V. Uh, uh, let me put it right in the middle. Uh, v. And then wire that over. And then I guess I'll just put another V on this side. Because why not? And then wire it down. There we go. And then just continue the trend, right? So this over to here. Is it safe to put a V? I guess it's safe, right? I can put a V there. Jump over there. Uh, oops. Someone's going to tell me that's an awful design. And they'll probably be right, because I'm a noob. But it kind of looks cool. So same thing over here. We'll just jump over that trace in the middle with a via. And then via back. Right there, kind of make it symmetrical. There. And then same thing. Over to like... You know, right where we're going to jump the trace via over that. And then via back. Cool. Look at that. Could have just routed the trace from the diode to the MCU on the top side. Oh, you mean like route this diode instead around here? So go around. I see what you're saying. But the vias make it look cool, don't you think? It's like we don't want to cross paths, so go via to the other side and then back. <laughs> it's all part of the of, of of making this thing fun. The the neo pixels are gonna be really ugly to route, right? I'm probably gonna want to reorder them to make them make it make more sense, right? Like it should probably be, be this one that goes we go to first, and then over, and then like down to the next one, and then over and then down something like that it should it should hit these in a predictable pattern i think right now it's going to uh one two three four five six actually that's not too bad oh what happened here huh neopixel line goes up to th there there and then the data out is oh that's just the net between these two so that we can do like that i guess and that is shared with hold on uh let's go back one wrap this one first why is it doing this crazy dance it should just go around to it the other side there, just do that. What's wrong with that? Oh, I'm hitting the edge cut. It's weird. Okay. Um, yeah, there we go. Good enough. So this one should just go straight. And then that's the plus five, right? So that goes... How come it can't fit through there? That was weird. It just insist it didn't want to connect there. <laughs> What's your problem? 
cool. And then we got to flip all the way over there. Oh, we have a little avenue we can run through for that. Look at the, oh, not quite fitting. Eh, squeak through. I guess I got to move that. Move this guy. I'm trying to move it. How come it doesn't want to move? There it goes. All right. Um, here. Go through there and connect. Oh, I'm going to cross that other line, though. Hmm. I got to be careful, because this line, maybe I should do that first. Which one is that? ground again okay maybe it'd be easier to have a copper pour then all these grounds can just go straight to the ground right ah uh, nah i only have grounds on the neopixels right and power too so I should just route them to different layers, right? I don't need to do a copper pour. What's this one? Plus five volts, yeah. Okay. Kind of feel like I should have plus five volts just going straight through here. Actually, both five, plus five volts and ground should go straight through here. Let me do that. Let me make a ground... Um, Power Avenue. So like... Actually, um, what I had there, um, just go straight up, uh, wire straight up from there. Uh, but I'm gonna run to those traces, so that's not gonna work. Put ground on one side? See, it's like an art. I don't know how to, like, what to route first and what to route last. Let me do this this side. This is easy. That goes to that. <laughs> and, um... That's plus 5 volts. Just go straight up for now. Right. Which one is this first? This one? There. And this one... This way. There. Easy. Ultimately, the ground comes out of here, right? Wait, what's, why does, why is it fighting me? Huh. So I had, I hit X and forced it. Um, I have ground go to the top. So via from here. There. So then the ground is available to go straight over uh, here and via back down, right? Look at that. And then that ground can go over the other ground like that. How come it's not connecting all the way? Just have to click. Extra clicks and all that. Okay. Look at that. I'm already getting myself into trouble by having 
crisscrossing traces. <laughs> um, but I think I'm making progress, right? So these grounds need to be connected somehow. How about we go over to there? Can I just go straight to there? There we go. <laughs> Why not? Got to get from there to there. How am I going to do that? It's like we're like uh, like on Tron cycles. Can we make it through the holes, right? I need to get up there. I think we're going to take a via somewhere. Via. Ah, uh, that didn't do it what I wanted. We set up any design rules. I'm just using the defaults. I looked at the defaults off stream um, earlier today and they looked fine compared to JLC PCB. One thing you find helps is to have a directional preference to your layers. The top layer traces tend to be horizontal, bottom. So I take it, Sarian, that you've done this before, and I've never done this before. Bottom layer traces tend to be vertical. These are probably things I'll pick up after a while. I tend to, I tend to be a slow learner when it comes to art, and this feels like an art to, uh, to me. So let me route... One thing that does seem like uh, obvious to me is that if I wire two switches one way, I should wire the next two switches the same way, right? That just makes sense to me, except for the fact that I made a column here. I should just move this via way up. That's what I should do. Move it up to here, right? And just move this down to there. Now I have no problem routing um, that to there and that over to there. The same way I did on the other column. And let me do the same thing up here. So take that via and move it like way up there and then I can do the same thing here I can route that to there easily and then I can route that to there easily look at that okay so yeah the challenge is to get from there to there and um, from there to there but let me do these easier ones first so that's column zero Uh, let's do it from the top. Uh, why is it not letting me do it? If I have to click there, did it. You sure that the copper trace to hold clearance is enough? I think so. Where would I have a, oh, I mean like right here? I'm sure that's fine. What's that? Grid half of that. Even smaller, please. So point two seven nine. Actually, that's the that's the hole, right? Or what? What are we? What, what would we be measuring hole to trace to hole? Where Where's the closest trace to any of these holes? I mean, here's maybe a, a spot. So 0.5 or 0.4. Um, I don't remember what the, what JLC PCB said, but I think I think you can get closer than that, right? Bottom right search for this non-plated through hole. Yeah, so like here. Like I'm like you're saying I might be too close here at 0.4. So, let's look. Uh, J L C B C B. I know they said it somewhere. Capabilities. I clicked it. Why is it still loading? Oh no, it's still here. It's here. Uh, where would we find that? Cl minimum clearance.
0 0.254. 0 0.254, right? And we're at 0.4. So we can get to down to 254 if we wanted to. We can go about that close. So we got plenty of clearance there for JLC PCB. And I think, yeah, I think I set this up in the board setup earlier. It's loading. So we'll go to constraints. There should be, um, copper to hole 0.25. So that matches JLC, right? 254. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it 0.35. Because 25 is not even 254. Yeah. And when we run the design check, it'll make sure that if I violate it, that it'll tell me and then I can move things around, right? Um, so I was thinking this one, I'd just give up and go on to the front side. So like here, we could just go immediately to a via and then just go front side all the way down, um, to a via here. Right? And then the same thing up here. Just go immediately to a via. And then just go straight down. Um, through there. Whoa. To a via. There. And... What's that one? Oh, uh, yeah. What's, what is that? Plus five volts. I don't have plus five volts connected to either of those. Oh, column one's not connected. Column one needs to be over here. Okay, so that's front side copper X. And what am I running into there? I'm just running into holes. Okay, so route around the holes. And there. Okay. And uh, that doesn't need to go. All oh, right, that's not populated. This is, which, where's, okay, those are my two columns, right? Column zero, column one, connected. So which row is not connected? All the rows are connected. So I just, I only have power left? No, I have one here. What is that? What is that? Plus five volts. Yeah, so my five volts are not connected, but I think I can route this one up, right? I just go around. There we go. Went around. And then um, these two to up there. Same thing, right? I can just go around. Easy. Often people trim down towards 34 key keeps but going straight to six is bravery <laughs> it's because i'm not brave enough to make my very first pcb be the complete keyboard i'm i'm scared i, I want to screw up this prototype six key keyboard learn from those mistakes and then have a better chance of having the final product be um not needing major rework <laughs> but yeah you're right um it it could be functional right I don't seem scared because I'm, I know I'm going to make mistakes on this and I don't, I don't mind making mistakes on a small board. Let's make mistakes on a small board so that we don't make mistakes on the big board. Macro board. Yeah. I mean, this could be kind of functional. You can make a little, I can make a stream deck controller out of this. Like this is turn the stream on, turn the stream off, uh, BRB, um, you know, some, some generic three different, uh, macros. I don't know. 
Do I just have one? No, I have three unrouted. Five volts, right. Ultimately, five volts needs to connect to that mess. Okay, so... Let's go around. Let's go around the periphery. Uh, go over to here. And then just connect in there. There we go. Two unrouted. I can't even see where they are. Anybody know? Anywhere? Anybody see where the unrouted traces are? There should be a way to highlight unrouted traces. Well, I guess I can run PCB or DRC. Okay, there. Oh, the grounds aren't connected. Okay. Yeah, I see it. These grounds up here are not connected. Uh, but we can connect over to the ground here. Maybe? Can I squeeze by? No, I can't. Ah. Uh, I could... There's traces in my way. Okay, abort. How about we go from here? Squeeze past this diode. No! We can't make it there. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll just give up and... Um, what is it? Okay, I'll just give up and go through a via. Um, put ground on the main plane. Zoop, like that. Okay, one unrouted. Which one is it? Wait, what? I see it. Oh, I forgot to do that one. Okay. Is there something in my way here? What am I running into? I don't know. It's just being flaky. There. Hey, look! Zero unrouted! Save it. Run the checker. One warning. I have a silk screen on an edge somewhere. I don't even see it. I don't see the yellow thing at all. Oh, there's one. Uh, did I get too close there? Yeah, okay, I just need to drag this a little bit. Oh. Yeah. That's gonna move things off. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, can I grab all this? Okay, I guess I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet on this one and f fix those traces up. I guess if I get close enough, I don't have to change that much, right? Okay, how close? Okay, this maybe needs to be moved, right? Well, actually, I can let the checker tell me. Have the checker tell me how close I am. Nope, I got errors. Hole clearance. So I gotta redo that trace there. Um, you cut X. Fixed. I'm getting close now. Probably just one error. Okay. That one. U and then cut, and then we're going to reroute this. Uh, that's ugly. Um, can I just move this around? I can. I can clean it up. Nice. All right. Zero warnings, zero errors. 
Is it ready to ship? View 3D printer. I think it's ready. God, I'll... I guess I um, just maybe next time I work on this, clean things up. Oh, there's a bunch of chat. A corded scheme might work. Uh, yeah, I'm completely new to this. What's going to be the MCU? It is a Raspberry Pi. 20... Uh, what is it? 2040. Akeeb 2040. So it's Adafruit's um, Pro, Mac, Pro Micro Elite C pin compatible controller uh, with a RP2040, which is a Raspberry Pi. This is it good as a drawing exercise? Yeah. Definitely have as many inputs as the final model so you can make sure the design actually works so you don't run out of GPU pins. Yeah, I am I have plenty of spare GPUs. All these are on the left side and a few are here. And I c calculated it and I, I only need 10 for the matrix that I want. And so we, we have like an extra two or three pins. So I might like hook an LED up to one, you know. I used to tell the hardware designer that I was paired with in my last job, um, add some more LEDs. <laughs> Every design, I'm like, looks good. Doesn't have enough LEDs, though. On the software 3 LED, SW3 LED, the trace is very close to the opening for LED. Oh, right here. I think that is not an edge cut. Oh, it is an edge cut. Wait a minute, then why did it not warn me? Shouldn't it have warned me that that's too close to an edge cut? You're right about that. Why didn't it warn me about that? I think it's not marked as whole. That's why it doesn't show it. It's on the edge cut layer. The 3D viewer knows it's a hole. Right? You can you can see it, it cut a hole there. In fact, we can see the problem there. We, we're cutting, we're getting really close to that trace there. Good point, though. Clearances are set for hole to copper, but not edge cut to copper. Oh, so maybe I could fix that in the board setup? Copper edge clearance. Good, good thing. Good catch. Let's put that in there. And then now it's going to flag all those, right? 38 errors. <laughs> yeah, because I'm getting too close. All right. These I want to I want to call are okay. So how close did I, am I to that? Maybe I... How far would I need to be away? Not that far. Okay, so I need to do some adjustments then. All of my LED pads need to be brought out even further. Actually, it makes sense because if that's the solder mask, it's being cut, which is bad. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ignore the ones around the pads for now and just fix this. Can I fix that just by dragging it? Ooh, I can. Look at that. I did it. Nope, it's still still too close. Can I drag it further away? Uh, we're sneaking between two holes here, I think. It doesn't want to move that. Nope, oh, nope, I satisfied that one. Okay, and I got a similar problem here. Okay, we can do this. Just move away from that hole. We'll be fine. This one, same deal. Just move away from the hole. This one too. Nice. I kind of like how it's a, it's a, it's a bit smart about it. Is that okay to do that? 
It's a 90 degree angle. I think 90 degree angles are okay, right? And this is a bad one. Um, well, that's weird. It, it wants to go that way now, but now it wants to go that way. It can't make up its mind which way around should we go. How about I force the hand, force its hand by moving that there. Okay, cool. This one's kind of weird. Move that between the holes, and then this same deal, right? Uh, a little bit further away. Okay, we can do this. Why did it do that? Just move that down, there we go. Oh, how close am I now? 28, this is still too close? Wait, why, why did it do that? Okay, that one's fixed. Those are all related to the pad. Yeah, weird for that to default to zero. I might have done that. That might have been my my fault. I think I might have seen that uh, blog entry. Oh no, I haven't. I saw something similar to this. It was a blue pill one. This is cool. Thank you for that link. I will um, add that to my list of chat donated links. Thank you for that. Here, you want some useless internet points? Points. I'll give you two useless internet points for that. Remember reading 90 degrees is fine, at least up to the gigahertz range. You've never done this, you just read a lot. Well, um, this is gonna be our experimental board. We'll see how it turns out, right? <laughs> Civilization building keeps for themselves. Clearly not bright species that they're using 90 degree angles for ordinary electrons. <laughs> They go crazy at 90 degree angles, all confused. Well, it is kind of weird. Heck, I, actually, I have an idea of how I might fix that. Look at that beautiful diagonal lane that I can move it to. Actually, I can just do that. There, it looks much cooler. All traces should have these like nice curves in them, right? Actually, this is a problem though. I think I'm not allowed to do that, right? So I should really move that out to be a triangle? How do I do that? Let me just cut, cut this. It's still a 90 degree angle. You're not helping. <laughs> Okay, I need to half my grid. There. It's not perfect. Ugh. I need precision. Close enough. <laughs> Yeah, isn't this a problem if I have that kind of join? Because it's an acute angle? So how would I avoid an acute angle there? Um, I don't think there is a way to avoid it, right? So really what I had from the beginning was was better. Because at, at least all angles are 90. Any, any, any other way I have an acute angle in there. Yeah, we don't want an acid trap. I remember 
watching that was in one of the videos I watched. We don't want those traps. Okay. I should have only 26. Where's the 27th error? Oh, there it is. How is that too close? Okay, whatever. We'll just move it a little bit. There we go. Should be down to 26 errors. Cool. Now I just need to fix these pads. So I'm going to do that with the symbol itself. And then I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> so that's in the uh, symbol editor. Where was that? Down here. All right. So these are too close, right? What was my... Um, save that. What was my board... What was my limit again? So point three. Did I set it to point a conservative point three five? Point three five. Point three five. Okay. So let me measure out point three five from here. There we go. We want to drag to, drag to there. I have my eye on the drag point right there. And then the other two. Get my measuring device out here. There's a little bit of slop there. Uh, shoot, I lost that again. I have my eye on that. So, what is that? Okay, I need to move one over. Good enough, right? I mean, I don't need that much room. To, I just need to solder the end of the pin there, right? This is very, very, very conservative. Maybe you're just old, but you don't like trap music, like foolish music. <laughs> all right, if I did this right, then um, can I just select all? Can I select all and just say update? Select all. change footprints yeah I can just change all footprints right change selected footprints update oh no that's bad undo <laughs> what did it do I don't know uh, let's just do them one at a time Um, update footprint from library is what I want. And move the pads out, right? Okay. There's probably a way to do this on all of them at once. But I don't know how to do it. And there's only six of them, and I'm being lazy. That's fine, right? Update footprint, update close. Three more. Edit. Update footprint from library close. Two more. See, now I'm glad I only had six to do and not 36. See, another reason to do the six keyboard, six key keyboard. Okay, run the DRC check. Two errors. Wait, what? Track has unconnected end. Is it this? Oh, there's like a little nub thing there. Delete that. Or is it that it needs that nub there? I don't know. 
I fixed it, whatever it was. Okay, error. Uh, I thought I would be able to see it, but I don't see it, so I'm just going to say click it, and let's look at where that is. I still don't see it. Where are you pointing me to? Oh, I see that. Um, we're too close to an edge. Move a little bit out. Run it again. One error. Right there. Oh, the via is too close. I think that's saying, right? So we'll just move it. It actually should have been down here anyway. Sure, right there. <gasps> zero, zero. We're done. Ship it. Yay. Okay. Just kind of glance over this to see if there's any mistakes. Interesting that it let me do that. I guess because the hole doesn't start until down here, right? And there's no, like, or the copper to copper is... Is there a constraint for that? Like copper to trace to copper? I guess that would be minimum clearance? Trace to pad. Okay. Yeah, I don't even see a constraint for that. <laughs> Unless it's minimum clearance, like between traces, right? And that's set to zero. I'm wondering if um, this mentions anything here. Pad to track point two. Okay, so we do have a constraint that I might not be satisfying here. No, we're within point two. That's fine. All right. What about here? Just barely? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly point two. I'm sure if I get it wrong, JLC, PCB, or whoever I go with will yell at me, right? This is plated through, through hole. Oh, did I read the wrong one? Oh. Oh, you're right. And But that's from the hole, not the copper. Right? It's pad to track that matters, right? Point two? That's the one that um, I'm think I might need to check because I didn't see a constraint for that. I mean, I have a rough uh, idea now. Um, that like that's pretty cl as close as I can get is right there, right? Like, that's probably as close as I want to make that. So anything that looks that close, I should double check. Like this. Actually, that's on the other side. Um, there's a weird angle. There's an acute angle there. I need to fix that. Fixed. I don't know. I think I kind of did a messy job routing. <laughs> but it was fun. 
That's okay, right? I think that's okay. Oh, there's an acute angle there. Let's make it a triangle by moving that to there. Oh, there's another one. That looks ugly too. Uh this should just this one should just move up to here, right? Ooh. And this one should move over a little bit. Delete that guy. Move. How come we won't move over? There. Delete that. Something going on there, though. That guy. How come there are there two traces there? Uh, there are. Okay, that's the problem. Um, he should just go to there. This one can just move in to that. There we go. Okay. Oh, there's a little nub here. Okay. You can do a Y junction, but wouldn't the acute angle of the Y be a problem? The bottom right switch five volt. Oh, is this what you mean by a Y a T junction? I don't think I would want to like the letter Y because of the the um or maybe that is a ninety degree angle. Okay, I, th I think I see what you what you're saying. I'm just looking for like weird looking turns now. Like, do I need to do that? I guess because to clear that hole, right? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Y junction is one ninety degree angle, and the T is two ninety degree angles. I see what you're saying. Yeah, the Y, the T has a one eight has a has a flat one. You're saying I could bend these up and make a ninety degree angle there. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. Kind of like what, like the one I have here, right? This Y. Oh, that's what you were pointing at. You were pointing at the center right. The switch four. This Y junction. Got it. Do I even need that? Why don't I just go flat? Can I just, isn't that simpler? I mean, it doesn't look as cool. That looks cooler. <laughs> it's probably shorter too, right? You were pulling it in, right? Or is that making it longer? I can't I can't remember my geometry. Is a Y better than a T? Because it only has one ninety degree angle instead of two. Got kinda close there. Um getting kinda close here. What's the spacing there? Point one five, that's not good. Pad to pad is point one point one two. Do they have a trace to trace? Trace width and spacing. There we go. Um, minimum. Sp Spacing for two layer bird point one two seven. So I'm within tolerance there. I think I didn't put that in though in the board setup. So I should set it to like point one five if it's not set already. Yeah, point one five. Hopefully I didn't add some errors there. 
Nope. We're still good. And that's that's the minimum, right? Right. Uh wrong tool. That one. Okay, that's it. That's one point one seven five. Actually it's even more than that, because I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Plenty of room. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder why that wasn't set. Oh, here's a... Can I just show... Uh, back copper only? What's that? Pad to trace. Point three. I'm fine with that, right? Pad to track. Yeah, point two is how close I can get. So that's fine. Okay. I think it's good to go. So I should sleep on it and then look at it one more time and then put down some money, right? I should probably review these pins. You know what? I think some of these other pins are also ground and I should connect all the ground pins together. Let me do that before I forget. Oh, it's almost two in the morning. I need to work tomorrow. What am I doing staying up this late? I'm having too much fun, that's what I'm doing. Okay, yeah, those, th those pins need to be grounded. Four and five. Which I don't have on my symbol yet. Okay, let me fix that. Actually, I can just copy my ground. Duplicate. Rotate. Edit. Four and five. Save and schematic. Edit, update symbol, update. Okay, then I need that. Grounded, please. Um, okay, if it's going to draw it that way, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move it around to here. Ugh. Why is it... Why did it drag the wire like that? Okay, we're just going to delete all this stuff. There. There's my ground. And that too. Save that. Update from schematic. Yeah, I mean, I should have heeded these warnings. I have no net for a lot of those symbols. I need to, like, actually connect them into the schematic and mark that I don't need to connect them. I have some unused nets. J1? Oh, uh, J1. J, what's J? <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's the connector. Wait, I have a unused net there? Pad T, the tip? It's used. I don't know what that warning was about. Now this should tell me I didn't connect all the grounds together. Yeah, okay, so we gotta connect these grounds together. So, this one's easy. Uh, like bad. Bad grid. Put grid back to that one. Okay, and then I can go around, right? Uh, no, I can't. Oh, I can go around the other way. Yay. Which means it's probably better to 
have this one go there. There we go. Wait, what? That's unconnected? What's unconnected? Is it? Oh, there's a little guy there. Okay, run it again. Okay, we're good. Um, I'm sure a bunch of hardware designers are now screaming at me for um, having a weird ground connection. <laughs> the grounds like meet up somewhere in the middle. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, look at that. Look at the look at my ground plane. It like looks really weird. They meet up in the middle at the Sevilla, <laughs> or around here. So that's gonna be that's gonna be bizarre. Um, they should pro probably have met up locally to the chip here, but I have some traces in the middle, and I'm not gonna worry about it. It's all good, right? As long as it works. What will the PCB be used for? It's a keyboard. Check it out. It's a intermediate step between what I have here on my second camera, which is a breadboard proof of concept, and an actual keyboard like a corn, like this guy, right? I'm making an intermediate one because I've never made a PCB before, and I want to make all my mistakes on this intermediate board, or not. Maybe it's flawless and it just works, and then I move straight to the end product, right? Uh, but yeah, each of these is going to have a hot swappable switch, uh, this is going to be a key KB2040, which I'm going to link in chat. So it's a Raspberry Pi microcontroller on um, with some flash memory, and it's going to has a USB port that connects back to the host. Um, it's a split keyboard, so this is an audio connector we're using for power and signal, like a serial port between the left and right halves. And so it's effectively left plus right, you have 12 keys. That's plenty of keys, right? Who needs more than 12 keys? <laughs> yeah, this, this project is all about making my own keyboard. So um, that will go to a OneNote shared notebook if you want to read more, imp more, more um, about it. But see, I, I was concentrating a lot this stream because I've never done this before and Routing traces actually is harder than I thought it would be, but so what I got is I got all six switches, I got six LEDs shining um, surface mounted on the back and uh, shining through holes in the front that we did with edge cuts. I got the sockets all mounted. We put the diodes on the back that are all kind of labeled nice, so we know it's one, two, three, four, five, six. The diodes go with the LEDs and they should match what's on the the switches on the front there And we even have this area of the board. We can just put like random stuff, right? Because there's nothing there. I could totally put some stuff there, right? So I I'm almost ready to um, Have a board house make this and then actually just plug in my microcontroller plug in some switches and see if it works the only thing I need to do on this on the firmware side is I need to enable another two rows, right? Because right now I only have switches one and two, one row, two columns. So I'm basically adding two more rows and assign uh, scan codes to them, and it should just work. Is it cheaper to make your own keyboard? It can be. It's you're shifting the cost from money to time. So if you're willing to put the time into it, you can get all the parts and get the the circuit board and the 3D printed stuff done either yourself or with a cheap prototyping board house and get it, the cost really far down. If you'd rather not spend so much time on it, you can have someone else build it for you, and they're going to basically do it, what I just described, only they're going to mark it up to get the margin. You see see how that works? And also, 
someone who's building keyboards for other people will probably make a lot of those keyboards and then it'll drive their cost down further and their margin up. Is there a place that makes PCBs for normal consumers? Yeah. We were just looking at them. So um, this is one JLC PCB. Um, another one was all PCB. And there's even another one in my notebook that had a special deal that I might try. Uh, where was that? Under links, I think. Yeah, this one. Uh, I gotta move that over. I guess it was all PCB has a deal going that I might try out, you know? So they say you can get a coupon for making a board for five bucks, I guess. As low as zero dollars, right? So um, for small quantities, you can have like these guys make a board for you. All you need to do is figure out how to use the CAD software here to um, design it and then you generate some files you send to them along with some money and they ship you back a board. Could I make you one? I'm actually going to be making like, a, there's like a minimum production of like, you have to make at least four or five of them. I'll, I'll have spares. I could, I could send them to people. Why not? <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind giving some of my friends some extra boards. Not, they probably wouldn't want this small dinky prototype. They probably want a, a full size keyboard, but I might end up doing that because I'll have, um, at least for the PCBs, I'll have lots of spares. There's an existing open source KB design. You could skip the design. Yeah. You, so that's also in my, in my notebook, um, under the project overview. So here's one that already exists that you can just have built because they've already done the work for you and they have the firmware too. It's called the pinchy keyboard. You know, it's also a rust firmware. They use the raspberry Pi, uh, raspberry Pico, a raspberry Pi Pico. And what's cool about this one. I mentioned it in previous streams. These microcontroller boards have so many GPIOs. They don't need diodes at all. Each key is individually mapped to a different GPIO pin. Um, but yeah, the, this GitHub has both the firmware and all of the CAD files for, for building this. <coughs> Excuse me. Talking for hours does that to you. Um, there's another one too. Um, is that under links? Other keyboards. There's rusty keys. So you could just take one of these keyboards that's in on GitHub and just make your own copy. Okay, this is all in Japanese, but apparently there's a PCB and there's firmware. <laughs> they don't have any pictures though. I guess you'd have to you'd have to um translate this if you don't know Japanese. But yeah, you can just find other people who have made keyboards both the firmware and the and the hardware and just have it printed and just assemble it yourself. So, okay. Which one was this? Okay, that was the getting started one that someone gave me. JLC. So I don't know who I'm going to have build mine. Maybe You know what I could do is have both, like, JLC, PCB, and all PCB make it and just compare the two. I've seen other people do that. Yeah. So I think I'm going to call it here because I need to go uh, work tomorrow. But I hope you guys all had fun watching. I, I don't know who to raid these days because I don't know anyone else doing this stuff. And all the people I usually watch and follow and raid are like not streaming <laughs> at this time of the day. So I think I'll just have to end the stream and let people disperse. Using cat thought your dedicated PCB design software like Libre PCB. I'm not sure what that is, but this cat program has many different aspects. That's just a viewer, right? So we started with making our own um, symbol. Actually, I had to do two of them. This is for the microcontroller socket, and then I made one for the NeoPixel. And then we progressed to making the the layout. So here's the NeoPixel's layout, and here's my um, TRS connector layout. All the other layouts I found kind of that came with uh, KiCad, I didn't have to make them. And then you, and then the next step is to go to your 
schematic and here's where we laid out the uh the symbols associated the footprints with them then laid out the circuits for the neopixel chain and the switches here's the columns and rows and then the final step was to go to the pcb and i forgot to say that and then basically lay things out physically in space and then draw copper traces between everything to basically the copper traces have to create the same circuit as the schematic so you can think of the schematic as the logical uh, organized view of the cir of overall circuit so you can separate things cleanly and then the PCB layout is the physical uh, arrangement of things um, and it, the physical arrangement is complicated right because you have multiple layers so this is the simplest uh, two layer um, the red lines are on the f copper traces on the front and blues are on the back and so you have some things on the front and some things on the back so that's why it's kind of handy to look at the 3d viewer and i'm dropping a bunch of frames connection's unstable right now okay i think my connection's stable again that was my connection not yours yeah this 3d viewer kind of puts things together and makes it easier to understand what you're seeing on this PCB layout because you can see like what it kind of looks like in space. You verify things like do my holes match up with the um, it's kind of hard to move this around. Do the holes match up with how this thing plugs in right and you can even like look into the interior of the board and say oh yeah the plug goes through that hole it looks looks good right. Um, the other thing I was looking at is like this NeoPixel um, does it actually shine through the board? Yes, it should, because I put a hole there, right? Here's where the hot swappable keyboard sw um, switches plug into the sockets, you know? And here's the diode that prevents ghosting, right? So put together, there's like multiple views in this tool, and they all kind of work together. Yep, connection is telling me it's bedtime. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed watching. I, I might stream tomorrow or I might not. And then I'm going to TwitchCon EU, so I won't be streaming. <laughs> I'll be back after TwitchCon EU. If I don't see you tomorrow, see you in about a week. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to go now. Bye. Just going to end the stream. And no one to raid. Sorry. Bye, 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 bye.